गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्माय श्री गुरु वे नम सदाशिव शरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदापर पर्यत वंदे गुरु परंपरा ओं सकनावबद सकनोपुन सकवीर कर्वाभगे तेजस्वीना वदीदमस्तमा वत्शावक ओं शांति 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 ओम योगेन चित्तस्य पतेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोत्थम प्रबर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलि मानतोस्म इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रिसाइट ऑल्सो यू कैन रिसाइट अत योग योगानुशासन योगानुशासन दृष्टु स्वरूप अवस्थान स्वरूपे वस्थान वृत्ति सारूप्यम इधर वृत्ति सारूप्यम इधर वृत्तय पंचतय कलिष्ट अक्लिष्टा वृत्तय पंचतय क्लिष्टा क्लिष्टा प्रमाण विपर्य विकल्प निद्रा स्मृतय प्रमाण विपर्य विकल्प निद्रा स्मृत प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान आगम प्रमाण प्रत्यक्षागमा प्रमाण विपर्यो मिथ्याज्ञान अतत् रूप प्रतिष्ठ विपर्यो मिथ्याज्ञान मदत्प प्रतिष्ठ सत्ति वस्तुशून्यो विकल्प सप्तानुपाति वस्तुशून्यो विकल अभाव प्रत्यय आलंबन वृत्ति अभाव प्रत्यालंबन वृत्ति अभूत विषय असम प्रमोशक स्मृति अनुपूद विषय संप्रमोशक स्मृति सो वी हैव डन दिस टू इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन ऑफ द पतंजली समाधि पाद लक्ष्य सूत्र that we know the first four sutras and then we learned the lakshya operates on the domain of vritti vritti is the thought modification we gone through the vrittis and then we understood 
then it creates a little pause a momentary pause and make us think we will have a reason for that but then the very question will refine our task that we are doing the action we are doing into a very purposeful action you see the two words are very important sadhana and sadhyam you know in 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 we used to say when somebody did a fantastic task we'll say great sadhana the normal work we don't say sadhana when something is done fantastically beautifully dutifully we call it sadhana so sadhana has got a very beautiful meaning that it means it is a well intended purposeful disciplined action towards a well defined goal see in life to be successful and you know, if you look at even those successful people in the business or anything they did not do just task they did sadhana that means to do a sadhana to do to convert an action to sadhana not going to spiritual parlors right now even on domestic life the prerequisite is to have the sadhyam what is the purpose what is the goal See, if somebody is cooking every day cooking so what are you doing i'm cooking why are you doing yeah i have to cook that's my task the task is completed and the cooking is finished so the goal is cooking the output is the cooked food the task is cooking that is fine but but really the goal is cooking cooking for who cooking for what then if you say i cook for my children my family then if you move the goal from simply the output of the task to something away from the task from the output because i want to feed my partner feed my children now you look at the goal now i am not cooking i want to feed my children feed my family feeding means for their health for their enjoyment therefore my task become a little bit more disciplined i need to really make the fantastic supremely good ingredient to the cooking i put my love to this i serve them well now you see the accomplishment is not the cooked food the sadhana itself becomes important to the sadhyam the the process of doing is relevant to the accomplishment this is very subtle point important to understand karma yoga as well every task when it even is done even badly it will finish there will be an output the output of the task is never the goal the impact of the task is the goal we always mistake it i want to finish it so you study very hard why have an exam so the, your goal is to study finish the chapter today tomorrow you ask i am studying again to finish next chapter but the goal is to write the exam pass the exam the reason i'm saying this because the sadhyam becomes the sadhanam becomes a sadhyam the little little milestones become the main stone milestone for us to reach then we go towards a bigger goal the trouble is the whole human life every life being has got such a propelling purpose behind it but we do not ask the question the main problem is we all ask what do I, what do you what do i need to do but the question is 
what is the purpose our our education does not teach us the purpose in life that's why we had to come to atma vidya what is the purpose the reason you asked that is the purpose can be anything then the act towards the purpose becomes a sadhana then there is a lot more enjoyment because then the sadhana the process of doing itself is a tapas but there is an inherent purpose for us in every human being we we work towards something because we do not know what we are working for therefore we take the most tangible one what is the tangible one hunger so as a child we cry hungry give me something the purpose is to feed me somebody gives the food then you eat the food the food is okay boring every day then you start uh, you know salivating and you want something milk added to the sugar added to the milk so then we ask for taste so then they say okay artha kama purushartham you need then the spiritual teachers tell us you ha- you can have a goal in life the goal is dharmartha kama so that therefore then the life becomes very purposeful that's the reason why the purushartham is given we can have a uh, subsidiary goals in this but there is one goal so as i told you just now if you keep the goal to be away from the output always the goal is going to be supreme so completed food is not the goal making my people feeling happy about it is the goal the output the food is not the goal it bringing happiness in them you see you detach the sadhyam from the sadhana completion so what is the sadhyam for us in life so vedas is revealing is one by one this is not artha this is not kama this is not dharma the power punyas but the moksha the moksha is not an attainment it is to know yourself so therefore if you take that position you take a step back therefore if that is my inherent goal so i need to attach all my task to that goal is it not not the output output can be anything so i am working today my output may be delivering something to my office but my goal is understanding myself now i learned that output is not my goal it's a interim goal for this lowki gat thing but i need to attach my goal to the uh, uh, sadhyam to the param purushartham which is the moksha then everything i do in life therefore is towards the supreme goal so this is what patanjali is taking us towards you talk about sadhanas sadhyam sadhyam is knowing yourself see that's why you know sometimes we say i am breathing no breathing is an action as if i am doing this i am not doing the breathing i may have an influence on breathing i can control it a little bit i can i can regulate it but i am not breathing breathing happens in this body you see so therefore if my goal is to understand myself and breathing happens automatically therefore the breathing is given as a sadhana to reach my goal by the god therefore the very breathing which sustain my body is not my end goal but it is the important interim goal now if you understood it then we will understand what you are going to see now we talked about the chitta vritti nirodham controlling the mind we asked the question how to control the mind so he is going to say in next four sutras the method for it abhyasa vairagya abhyam tan nirodha let's see the literal meaning then we understand the lakshyartham abhyasa abhyasa means practice yoga abhyasam we say abhyasa means practice vairagya abhyam so abhyasa vairagya abhyam 
അഭ്യാസം ആൻഡ് വൈരാഗ്യം ദി ആർ ഡുവൽ ഇൻ എൻ സൺസ്ക്രിറ്റ് ടുഗദർ വൈരാഗ്യം മീൻസ് ഡിസ്പാഷൻ വി വി ഇൻ ലേൺ ടു പോട്ട് വൈരാഗ്യം ഇൻ തത്വബോധ വി ഗോ ടു ലേൺ ഇറ്റ് മോർ ആൻഡ് മോർ ഓൺ ഇറ്റ് വൈരാഗ്യം മീൻസ് ദ യു നോ ദിസ് ബ്യൂട്ടി ഓഫ് ദിസ് ദിസ് വേർഡ്സ് ആസ് ഇഫ് ദേ സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഔട്ട് വിത്ത് എ ഡിസ്റ്റിങ്ക്റ്റ് മീനിങ് വിവേകം ആൻഡ് വൈരാഗ്യം but if you go more and more deeper into it vairagyam is vivekam vivekam is vairagyam gnanam will vairagyam moksham is vairagyam so it is going to take you and it is not uh, illogical because we are going to go through this non difference in everything the knower and the knowing going to be one and the same but here we take it step by step so vairagyam is dispassion abhyasam is practice so together of those nirodha so here tat of the, tat means what of those vrittis so we are now reading from the previous sutras of those vrittis for those vrittis for those vrittis nirodham see chitta vritti nirodham he bring the words again the word is relative to that to do the chitta vritti nirodham you need practice and dispassion okay so we need to therefore ask what is this practice what is a dispassion there are a lot of uh, discussion on it i want to bring in uh, some beautiful um, um, stand them to this so in the vyasa bhashya the chitta means you know chitta nadi the river of chitta for for those of you who been to mount kailash or uh, at least seen it if you go to mount kailash you trek all the way uh, and when you go from the tibetan route you will see the southern facing uh, mount kailash mountain monumental and then in front of it is the blue hairy flats blue water absolutely still called manasarovar then when you do the parikram you go around this you see the left side you see another equally stunning beautiful still water called uh rakshasada so there are two lakes manasarovar and rakshasada and and the legend says that you know um, rakshasada lake is guarded by uh, rakshasas and uh, if you go there you get entrapped don't go there don't dip in fact you should not dip in any waters of course they are very pure and uh, pious but uh, people go there and and do bathing in the manasarovar which personally i don't think we should do it but anyway it is fine to go to the manasarovar touch it and feel it and uh, embrace it and worship it but you stay away from the rakshasa lake they say uh, but also they say there is full of uh, platinum chromium or kind of wealth and uh, uh, kuberans place it is ravana is kubera's brother that's why ravana went there to acquire the wealth but he saw kailash and say there is no, no wealth better than kailash itself Uh, so he wanted to take the whole kailash away so the example is if you look at it everything jalasthanam is that in in the mount kailash there is a little uh, tributary comes from this head of this mountain it's called the uma a little tributary tribute it goes through it uh, the mount kailash is, is snow the bottom of it go down and that split the water into the manasarovar and uh, this tal and then it also goes to brahmaputra uh, gangotri and all that so all this urpakistan is there that's that's a story so in if you take any any mountain so the river comes through and it flows towards a passage which is easy to flow through now chitta nadi the thought process in compared to river it goes through the decline path called samsara pragbara it's a very technical term pragbara means um you know something is sloped down because of the weight baram is pushing it down so there is a d- inclined passage what is the load samsara is a load when you have desires filled up path then the thoughts go there 
it creates a lake of samsara and you tra you're trapped into this so when you are when you have desire filled you know uh, thoughts come through all the time rajas tamas dominated thoughts and there is no control because everything flows through because samsara pragbara is there it flowing through that path you get into this samsara therefore we have to really stop going towards that path why it is going towards the path because it is attracted towards the worldly objects therefore we need to build the dam so if you build a dam not to go in the route of desires that dam is called vairagya dispassion so you build the dam so that it doesn't go towards the desire filled objects take a simple understanding now okay i have not blocked it so they don't go towards the desires but now i want to really turn, turn channel towards kaivalyam isolation liberation so a good path i need to take it through kaivalya pragbara another path where this is where we are going to go chitta prati nirodham will take you that path when you do all the abhyasam this is called abhyasam because you are digging at showing a path so that water doesn't stagnate it flows through continuously flows through so this is one i thought this example is a very poetic example so thought is a river by vairagyam you block thought going towards desires what kind of desires we'll see you block is a dam then you funnel it through a good process is abhyasam okay understandable there is another way of looking at it the chitta vritti nirodham if you remember we saw the state of mind kshipta mooda vikshipta egagra niruddha when the mind is scattered so many thoughts i am in this class now my mind is on a mot to be done water bill to pay banks to go everything is going on at the same time you didn't have a good sleep last night you were dosing off everything is happening now if i teach you or if i tell you share with you learn with you uh potentially yoga shastra now you're not able to focus it you are in a shifta mind or some of you don't have many activity but you had a great you know fantastic breakfast your stomach is full you are feeling a bit dosing off mooda so we saw this this first three state especially the first two kshipta and mooda state is not a good state for yoga because rajas and tamas is dominating it now we are talking about yoga how to control the mind we know that the first three states are not good state to be in but i am i am I have to be rajas dominated i have some time i sleep i get up from the sleep so how do i convert this three state towards egagra state that is where vairagyam and abhyasam comes into help so what drags you towards external object you don't you don't when you're sleeping off you are not tempted to see a movie because when your mind is active body is active you want to skip the yoga class but go to the movie so what is dominant there is rajas so we just now saw the desires are controlled by the dam of vairagya therefore if you look at the control of rajas you need vairagya to control the tamas you need see sometimes very important to understand even you may have the rajas control your mind is on the yoga no you have you are you are, you are not going around not scattering and the teacher teaches you your meditation yoga asana there's one asana called savasana so you just lie down like like a dead corpse and you will sleep or you do a yoga class or you do a dhyanam you do upanyasam and you go with a great intent 
sattvic intent all your you shut down all your rajasic activity you go and sit there sleep comes in it's a good feeling but it is tamas the tamas is not controlled so it is not good enough to control rajas so that you don't have external desires you also have to control the tamas therefore here rajas is the vairagyam tamas is the abhyas so this may be interesting for you to understand and hold on to it therefore when we when you learn about vairagyam from patanjali and put into practice you are going to deal with your desires your interaction with your external objects cultivating you know um, renunciation don't worry i'm not going to drive you to become sanyasi or something but to have mastery over them you know in in if you go to kashi you will see this bairagis they are called they are they are uh, they are they have immense vairagyam but not because of gnanam of course maybe they have gnanam i don't know but if you give them food they need to eat they can't renunciate food they need to eat but if you give the food they take the if you give a naan chapati something like that they will take it to the ganges dip it in the ganges you know throw all this thing away and then eat it because they don't want any taste in it because the taste may trigger them they are very 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 worried about their sadhana so therefore control of rajas is vairagyam tamas is abhyas so okay this is what this sutra says understand i understand the definition the scope of these two words next one okay can i just have one and the other we just no thought that is not possible because you need to control the sleep layam bhagwan says that also in the many times he says i think this one is a very interesting one he says sanshya mahabaho mano durga nigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate cha irins and you need to have both abhyasam and vairagyam therefore it is very important it is not good enough to have a dhyanam and all this yoga practice hatha yoga focusing the mind without understanding vairagyam and vairagyam requires some spiritual understanding because there's a karana vairagyam you know you have a somebody is dead in the family very close person and uh, vairagyam will come everybody will say what is the point of money house what is the point of all this or they say prasava vairagyam when 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 a pregnant mother or the pain when she is deliver the baby she will say enough of this child i have no more children any more in life this is painful of course she will have five more children later nothing wrong with this so that vairagyam is a momentary is a karana vairagyam that is not you're talking about you're talking about dispassion out of viveka so here bhagavan says abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grihyate you need both of them it's like a coin of both sides okay therefore can i can i do this too and uh, get everything done you can done you can do most of it because to sustain this vairagyam you need shraddha why you have to come every sunday to class and every day to practice because there is something propelling you to come kal shraddha shraddha is a technical word maybe you can say you like it affection prem bhakti therefore what conceives what nurtures vairagyam and abhyasam is shraddha but shraddha comes from bhakti because vedas use or shraddha bhakti is the word that we use it in subsequently so bhakti is very important and patanjali is going to say this ishvara pranidhanam we are going to see that in one of the sutras in a way it is it is it is a is really helping in disguise because 
some of us you know learn all these sastras when, when we are getting older in life right and suddenly you come back and you come there and say patanjali yoga sastram you need to have a fit mind get up stand up or sit down do the pranayama do tapas do fasting and i'm sorry my body doesn't help me out so don't worry take bhakti ishara pranidhanam so there is a way for everybody else but when we are young in mind young in body when you are learning this we are triply blessed because if you are if you can do physical practice mental control dhyanam and also bhakti ishara pranidhanam then you become a yogi much faster you see very important because desire is holding on the lake of samsara you know sometimes people say you know when somebody is in the dead bed even a very old person we want him to really peacefully go but he doesn't go he just is there staying there we say look maybe he has got a desire true the desire is putting him because he has not flow has been not dictated to him but that desire is useless desire because the desire has no meaningful purpose it is important see this is very important what the bhagavatam says you don't need to really attain all that that is needed to get mukti in one birth we cannot do in fact you don't even need to do any sadhanas the first thing you should know what is the sadhyam i need so you cannot one cannot die one should not die without knowing what is the purpose of my life it's you see how how liberating it is so if you just know the purpose of my life is not just having amazing wealth and having hundreds of children and a lineage because you you will keep on asking the question why what's the purpose you say the purpose is to know the paramatma or know myself that very knowing is good enough because then death is fine because that purpose purpose that becomes samskara because you what you what you learned is that see this is that's why the breathing happens automatically without you asking that's why you cannot die when you want to die it is all predetermined because you have to use your bhoga atayana ayatanam your body has to be used for this so all this is sadhanam so not frightening but what i'm saying is therefore in this life don't worry that if you learn not learned everything oh i didn't learn this sloka i didn't learn this bhajan fine we can learn all this before learning why i have to learn this what is my purpose in my life if, if it is to know the god to know the god is to know myself therefore the propelling question should be who am i now if that question is become samskara becomes a predominant prati in you agam vritti it's called the first vritti that happens in you then you say i can't focus on this vritti because the agam vritti has been overshadowed by every other vritti that's why the brahma muhurtam in the morning 4 o'clock we get up because when you are coming from the sushupti in the deep sleep when you get up the first vritti that comes out is agam vritti it comes it comes in a nanoseconds then comes in oh i got up where is my alarm clock where is my phone where is my whatsapp then all the vrittis come supersede on it so if you are able to grasp that agam vritti that's why they say that's a beautiful moment to do meditation tapas so why i'm saying this okay i'm saying this because the abhyasam and vairagyam are important steps bhakti is a good rapper but all these three becomes beautifully engaging you in the path if you know the purpose the purpose is atma gnanam atma vicharam everything else like you know if you are run if you are practicing for a marathon for 3 months and if you come to play squash with me you will squash me because you will be so fit 
but you didn't practice for playing squash with me but you're playing for supreme goal marathon running same way if your if your life becomes a sadhana for the atma vicharam life problems will be very simple you will be you will be solving all these things because you will be detached from this problem you'll be able to see them very well because when you are attached to the problem you cannot see it that's why a doctor has to when he's when he's not well he can apply his own knowledge because he is not detached he will go to another doctor somebody to see dispassionately okay so now we know there are two coins abhyasam and vairagyam now we see each one so now we will call this abhyasam as a yogic abhyasam because we are talking about the yoga of course very much these things will apply to your ordinary life practice as well but let us make from today onwards let's try to make everything you do as a sadhana yeah we know the goal everything you're driving your you know you imagine you, you, your performance will improve you practice music or you're doing your office job you do it with a view of a supreme goal that you deliver something perfect so everything become a yogic practice this understanding is important because we are going to talk about how long this practice is you know whenever you say practice it first question i ask you good how long because we are we are very worried about loading up anything if you if you say something i will teach you something you must practice it the natural question is how long i should practice it so forever if i say you will get very bored but you practice it as much necessary but then it becomes yourself like you know when uh, when boris becker's backhand in tennis is so natural when you learn tennis you 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 put your hand elbow 45 degree angle you know the racket is looking at this ground and you swing shoulder turn you you think of every step then when you go to the when you one year after you go and play you do a swing two three four times it's natural okay here he says tatra sthitau yatna abhyasa so let's look at the meaning tatra sanskrit tatra means those here tatra look at the previous sutra abhyasam and vairagyam tatra so sutra is alpaksham we have to reduce the words so tatra means between those abhyasam and vairagyam between those practice and dispassion sthitau steadiness coming to rest sthiti means steady sthitau means becoming steady yatnah effort abhyasa so here the four words tatra sthitau yatna abhyasa so between those two practice and dispassion he is now defining practice practice is an effort or endeavor towards attaining stillness or stability so this is the process of becoming balanced okay this is natural because chitta vritti nirodham is become still therefore abhyasam is defining it as a process so that now you see he is defining the goal very clearly defining the method very clearly therefore the goal becomes a sadhana the task becomes a sorry goal becomes sadhyam task becomes a sadhana sadhana is well defined so the sthiti is very important point so it is going towards that balance so when you are completely in steady you are already in the state of yoga it is going towards the steady disturbance is coming through i am putting an effort to become focused the next word is yatna now we use the word yatna prayatna we say i'm doing a prayatna the suffix the prefix pra means good prayatna means good effort right effort you know when you have to put effort for achieve anything the effort has to be right effort right means related to the effort right attitude what is the first thing 
okay i am i am cooking i am bored I'm, i have to do this job or, or writing this uh, stuff for my daughter or doing this work without any interest you are doing it correctly perfectly but you have no interest in it that means your mind is not attached to it that is not prayatna so prayatna means utsah you 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 have joy you have happiness so never do anything that you are not happy to do unless of course it is it affects somebody else if you don't do it but if you need to do something for yourself you have to enjoy it you should not be you have to you must enjoy it natural love prem utsah sahasam sahas events you uh, an art of doing it you have a way of doing it you have you have the means to achieve it i will do it i will find a way to do it applying your mind when you learn asanam i can't do padmasanam but they say stiram sukham asanam patanjali gives a freedom to sit in a comfortable posture but says look uh, back like your back be straight if you can do it right he do it i will try to do it i will try to be as stiff as possible effort dhairyam prayatnam nakwa dhairyam you need a valor you need you need to have the courage to confront anything you chicken out you know what's the point dhairyam is very important dhairyam is very important asset dhairyam comes from dhairyam you see you lose dhairyam courage you lose and not because you are physically fragile you know i i know people who are you know bodybuilders get afraid of uh, things but dhairyam la- is is lacking eroding when you have very devious motive you can never be truly courageous when the motive is devious when you are doing it for somebody else when you are not not really affected by the result of it you will be very courageous what was the example in anything in life you know corona you know we see people are so scared everybody is scared uh, I, i heard the news and some very close friend of mine is is is, is in a tragic condition so then suddenly you you become you know what was the news to you affect you so the attachment is eroding it so you need to have, whenever you do anything you should have the idea so yes i will i will do it but then patanjali also gives we are going to go through this in a detail later uh, but i'm just giving a glimpse of it so we also need to have adhyatma vidya because the dispassion we already talked about the karana vairagya you know you 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 take sanyasa because your your, your partner is really hassling you. you you get away from from the house to some some ashrama because you don't like to tackle the problems of your commitment they are adhairya they are cowards so the true vairagya comes from the adhyatmika gnana so you need to have a spiritual knowledge and also magat seva because all this will be reinforced when you do seva to to others to seva to the old people uh, great people spiritual people good people humble humility so all that make you better prepared to make you prayatnam abhyasam very sharp we see what's the time i have okay so so if we can say every effort that is a revealing a positive traits so yoga abhyasam means the abhyasam have to be with utsaham sagasam dhairyam beginning to get the atma atma vidya obedient okay now we say okay i am doing all this i am i am very committed but um, i'm not getting any benefit out of it then i would say well 
the practice is not very well defined well even i have utsagam i have no i have all the gear for yogasana i have bought, bought my mat yoga mat um, i come there and i'm i'm a lot of uh, enthusiasm on it so in this sutra he says satu dirga kala nairantarya satkara asevito trida bhumi hi so let's see the meaning of it first he says drida bhumi hi bhumi hi means the earth the standing drida bhumi means you have a very good footing standing you got a fantastic stability on what on the abhyasa so that is the result of it satu sa tu sa means sah that what are you talking about abhyasa that practice tu means however how the practice is going to give you for the definition dirga kala you got to do for a long time you say somebody said look i have been doing yogasana for past 30 years oh fantastic you must be really good yeah but you know but not really is bit uh, bit rusty because i used to do once a month so that's that's not dirga kala so you have to do long time and also you have to complete it so i i i was doing yoga 30 minutes before i complete i get out so there is no benefit of it nait nairantarya antaram means uh, gap nirantaram means without gap nirantaram permanent so that which is nirantaram is nairantaryam is a vibhakti nairantaryam so you do without gap so i cannot do uh, one month one day yoga asana no i must do continuously dirga kalam as long as it needed to complete that uh, lakshyam without gap nairantaryam how can i do without gap i mean uh, if you allocate it for one hour that's my yoga class i can't do once i finish yoga i cannot do nairantaryam well that is correct if right now you are thinking about yoga means uh, in the mat doing some yoga asana or doing a dhyana but patanjali is going to teach you ashtanga yoga there are eight different limbs of this yoga so when you combine all these eight it takes your whole life so you are always in one of the state the way nairantaryam becomes meaningful when you take the ashtanga yoga we have not learned it yet we will learn it so right now what you can do if in your imagination is one hour yoga practice that's fine the teacher is telling you one hour every day you do it that means one hour without gap nairantaryam dirga kale as long as the teacher says you have to do it every day also nairantaryam means i do one hour today as do but i don't do tuesday wednesday thursday friday because i am busy i do saturday gap so what has been of course it's subjective depending on what the sadhya means you have to take up commitment to do dirga kale nairantaryam how do you how do i practice this take um, take uh, mantra japam I, i like rama ram 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 shiva 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 whatever i am going to say 6 to 6:30 every day test it out can you can you do that nairantaryam dirga kala or i say just sit to before the yoga practice i want you to practice so that sit there straight don't no mantras no breathing nothing just sit there quietly not moving a limb of your body not even your finger should move not your your eyes should uh, open sit for 10 minutes nairantaryam can you do it so this like this you 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 inculcate little practices why because you want to learn vashikar you must have to control everything if you are not able to control oh what happened my itch when i'm sitting there 10 minutes my elbow is itching yeah just watch the itching it will go away 
of course don't don't struggle yourself don't try to do it and make yourself painful but simple things what makes it easy for you this is a challenge for you because if you want to take yoga abhyas very seriously even physical level mental level this is a good exercise 5 minutes sitting there mudita vadanam have a smile on your face close your eyes comfortable position nairantaryam jigga kal you will see lot of fun your mind will be showing cinemas a lot of things will come a lot of interaction will come phone will ring whatsapp will beep desperate message each will come 10 minutes okay then he says most important one is i have been doing it i have been doing it i i i learned from this book i have been doing it dirga kalam nairantaryam i'm not getting any results but it has to be the rightly done satkara that's why that's why that's the reason why they say make sure you learn from a proper teacher if you do a hatha yoga i don't know hatha yoga you go to hatha yoga teacher then hatha yoga or whatever you learn you learn from the right sources understand it is a right approach and apply the right approach so abhyasa is applying the right knowledge for as long as is needed consistently without gap all common sense here but by by going through the words it reinforces the point asevita asevita means you pursue it thoroughly it's a pursuit it, it it is a performance of action pursuit is a performing action it is it is indispensable action you do it with such diligence dutifully so this is what a well defined practice means that gives you the firm ground thread up for me so we can say this practice as long as required without gap in the right way therefore when you learn the especially sadhana part in second chapter when you learn about abhyasam when you say perform this abhyasam that means you do dirga kalam nairantaryam satkaram sevitam utsaham you know daidyam all this is needed then you will see the results drishta see here is going to give you vairagyam in two different categories vairagyam is dispassion we said dispassion need to come from desireful objectives so he is therefore defining okay drishta drishta means whatever you see it is by eyes but also means smell all your indriyas whatever you can see anushravika anushravika anu means continuous shravika means heard shrunu in fact anushravika means vedas scriptures what is heard is anushravika so whatever is heard so first one is drishta second one is you can say adrishta not heard, not seen but heard because you know you can basically divide everything that you enjoy in life to be that you see that you heard that that means you have not seen it uh, what what do you mean by that it is not that america i have not seen it but america exist that's not that it is not seeable in this world therefore it is coming from the smritis in the shrutis like example swarga kamadenu karpak parsha being in the indra loka sakya loka vaikuntha so therefore adrishta palam andrishta palam so you can take that way drishta anushubika so vishaya means object object of experience therefore drishta vishaya anushubika vishaya so drishta anushubika vishaya vidrishana next word trishna trishna means 
um, thirst, desire. So vatrishna means without the desire. So you can you can take it uh, when you split it. Drishta vishaya vatrishna vatrishna. Anusvika vishaya vatrishna. Drishta vishaya vatrishna means whatever I see, I don't have desire on them. Anusvika vishaya vatrishna means whatever the all these um, shastras say or the seniors say about the Adrishtapallam, I don't have desire. See, potentially saying, not even punyas, not even shwarga, not even intraloka patavis, and all that I don't need it. In all this, you don't have no desires. So he is giving Vairagya in two stages the worldly desires renunciation, even the outworldly desires renunciation. Then you may have a question. Well, how about I am desiring to be with the God in Vaikuntha or Kailasha or with, with God? It is not outerly world. No. Kailasha is not out somewhere out there. Because if it is God, we see God is the one who sees everything. Purusha in Patanjali Yoga. The seer, the equivalent of seer is the seer in me, my Atma. Therefore, that cannot be drishta. I cannot see it. It cannot be adrishta. It is adrishta in literal meaning because you are not able to see it. But it is unknowable. You remember that? Known, unknown and unknowable. So therefore, if you only have to focus on the unknowable, I must have a dispassion on Noble, unknowable, unknown. Because you know, uh, honest of like, if, if heaven is there, I have not seen it. But we know that Smritis don't lie, Smriti don't, don't lie, Bibles don't lie. So therefore, heaven must be there. But they say heaven, the passage, the, the ticket is Punya. If you have Punya, you can become Indra, you can become. Uh, 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 Brahma. So therefore, maybe I may be able to go and see the heaven and see those people there in heaven. I don't want that. Because why? That is ni not Nirantaram. It will finish. Because it is, as soon as this ticket's validity is gone, I have fallen down, descending back to this ground with my samskaras. I don't mind taking a trip. But potentially makes a point in saying this because we will learn later when you do this uh, yoga abhyasam as potentially says in satkara abhyasam you will get adhishtapalam because your mind becomes egakram you are able to see that not otherwise you will be able to see you are able to hear what otherwise you won't be able to hear Because it is inevitable. You now, like, like if you are looking at a, a muddy water, and if you keep looking at it, uh, and then mud just subsides, and the water becomes translucent, transparent, and you are able to see something there. It is not coming now. It is always there, but we were not not able to see before. So, same way in the yoga abhyasam, in meditation, dhyana, the mind becomes purer and purer. You are able to see things. Don't say you acquired some great power. Not yet. But you got a better vision because you ignore to see them before because mind is not ready to see. Now you see. So you were able to see that you did not able to see before. You were able to hear something that you did not able to hear before. And if you pursue that, if you don't have vairagyam on it, if you pursue this, it will say, aha, uh -huh, here is a person coming to me, I'll victimize him. It will throw a little bit more bonus. You are able to say the future of somebody. You are able to see things that others can't see. And you see they are paying money for that. And then you become 
you put a whiteboard outside fortune telling future reading or even if you are more brave you say guru i am uh, i am such and such i can do for money and even then you should not go, go after this so he is actually giving you a seed adrishta vairagyam object adrishta vishaya vairagyam you don't have so you must so with trishna trishnaya you don't have you don't even have a thirst towards those things you don't even come to yoga and say look i want to get ashtama siddhi it will come don't worry but if you look for it it won't so he says don't ask for it so he is putting very big conditions for vairagyam and he say next one vashi khar samgya samgya means knowledge name vashi khar it's a very i don't know whether i have time to talk to talk about it today no so vashi khar is a stage of vairagyam where you have mastery over the object experience so you know you know you, you say in, uh, in tamil you know they they, they did vashiyam they did vashiyam on me they they control me that means the hold is on on that so if you can take the hold back you are tv state of vashikar i have the control so when you have the control of your embodiments your faculties which are looking at the drishta vishaya an anushvaki vishaya drishta vishaya and adrishta vishaya in other words objects of experience in this world and any other world if i have no desire on it no craving on it then i have the control the control is called vashikaram the name is samgya means the name then the definition of that is what vairagyam so he defines now vairagyam in a in a flawless way covering ground for subsequent sutras as well i i keep repeating this because this is very important to understand vairagyam is people say it's now i don't mean so is some people use it for, for uh, will power that's fine sometimes people use it for um, renunciation giving up you know if you go to kashi you must give up something so they will go there and give up the the thing that you already hate you know i never eat bitter gourd so i go there in kashi i give up that that's not my ragya that's not the purpose of it you wasting your time going to kashi this passion is giving the attachment to a drishta vishaya in which you have a compelling attachment or adrishta vishaya in which you have compelling attachment don't worry it's not about attachment to god attachment to puja what about say like i i am i am i'm attached to this fasting i'm attached to this to this puja every day no don't give up that one keep it there you will come to the stage where you will also give up that para vaira ke we talk about that one like you know when tyagaraja the the great saint you know who wrote a lot of kirtanas in this kirtanas he brought out uh, vedanta gnanam uh, but he is a upasana upasaka he worships the lord rama in a statue and uh, uh, his elder brother maybe he is 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 a, is a guru to him in a way but uh, he throws it away or something it, it's gone it's lost in the river and um, chagraja was miserable he can't i can't find the rama he said he can't give up because he has an attachment to it and then rama is revealed to him of course it's fine and then he he sings beautiful songs and if you read some of his kirtanas after knowing this life history you will see paravairagyam comes out of it like if you if you read uh, badragiri is one 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 king who became a uh, he wrote hundred songs about vairagyam and, but his vairagyam is out of 
lust. He had he had a lot of uh, uh, desire. Like Arunagiri Nadar was womanizing, going around with women and uh, beyond the legitimate wife. And uh, and he gained knowledge and he gives up everything. So there can be many triggers. We are going to see in the next session what triggers the Vairagyam. But here it potentially gives a ground that Vairagyam is by the knowledge why why Bhattrakiri or why Arunagiri Nadar or uh, uh, Rama's life is uh, Ramayana Balakanta is uh, supremely beautiful to learn because the way Rama conducted himself, Rama is a jnani, paragnani. He he did not want uh, the crown. He is a very reluctant prince, reluctant king. So he was not like his, but Rama's young, young age is not like Krishna's young age, naughty and cheerful. And because the avatar's purpose is very different. Rama's Rama came to conduct himself, where Krishna came to conduct the orchestra. He's an orchestra conductor. He doesn't play. An orchestra conductor doesn't play. You have to look at him, what he says. He doesn't play any instrument. Krishna was that. Purnavatara. So Krishna, knowledge you must learn from him. If you want to follow his action, you must understand the action because he was a yogi. Because Rama conducted himself as a human being. He was a living being. That's why Valmiki writes Ramayana in Rama as a human being. Others wrote Ramayana, Kambaramayana, Dulsidasa, uh, they could not really hold on to him as a human being. So they cannot accept, they even justified uh, the apparent uh, Rama's misjudgment of characters that comes out in Valmiki Ramayana in, 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 uh, in a reluctant contempt. So therefore they, they give a reason for that and that's, that's a different story. But I think for us, at least for me, I think it's it's a life history of human beings, their endeavors is very educational because they were trying to, that's why, you know, even why the Vyasa wrote the Smritis, because Vedas talk about Parajnanam, supreme truth, but the world is a lot of hindrances. So therefore, how can one live a life that Vedas are dictating? How can we give to these human beings how to live. You can't give another uh, bashim for the Veda and say explain every word and it's meaningless. Therefore, the avatara comes in, their life experiences, purposefully life has got problems. See, Rama's life is not because Rama has got a durkarma, he has to suffer. No. They imp impose themselves on the samskaras so that they can show contact. But that's the reason why, if you see Rama as not as an avatar, look at Rama as a great human being. That's why it's called Rama Yanam. Ayanam means the path. It's not Rama's story. Rama, studying Ramayana is Rama's path. Dakshinayanam, Mutrayanam, Ramayanam. So when you read Rama's life, you must see how Rama conducts himself in every situation. So, Vairagyam is Rama's personification. Vairagyam in everything. That Vairagyam is Viveka Vairagyam. And then he asks questions. In Balakana, he asks questions. Why, why I do this? Why I do Why I not do this? So, this is the Patanjali Sutra that gives exactly that. Vairagyam is Drishta, Anusravika, Vishaya, Dhrnasya. She correct Samgya Vairagya. So I think we will stop it here. I think it's a I'll read 11 minutes most. Take the Chanti Padam now. Om Ashadoma Shadgamaya. Om Ashadoma Shadgamaya. Tamashoma Jodir Gamaya. Tamashoma Jodir Gamaya. Amardam Gamaya. Om Shanti 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 Om 